Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Riddhi Datta and in this video, we are going to build an immutable class in Java right from the scratch. In the last video, we talked about that what is immutability in Java, why strings are immutable. We also discussed about string interning, string pooling and all these things. I showed you a demo. So if you haven't checked out this video, feel free to go and check out that particular video just after watching this video. So I've already created a custom class in this current package, uh, which I've already uh, called immutable class, right? Now, there are a couple of properties that immutable class holds. First property is that the immutable class cannot be extended, right? And for that, we have to define this particular final keyword with this particular immutable class. Now, if you go and check out strings, right, you would already see that, you know, string is, which is an immutable class, which we talked about, is already decla declared as final. So hence, we are also going to declare our class as final as well. Now, let's say uh, our class will contain, let's say, int some ID, right? Now we have to also ensure that this this is private because of what does an immutable class mean, right? I mean, immutable class means is the contents of this class cannot be changed from the outside, right? That is what our main motto is. Once it is set, it cannot be changed by any means. Okay. So for that, obviously, uh, following the encapsulation principles, we have to mark it as private. Now the second thing over here is we don't want to expose the setter method to the outside world because if you expose the setter method to the outside world what will happen is anyone will call the set method multiple times and change it right that is something we don't want and therefore this immutable class won't have any set method it will have a get method we can get the contents of the object but we don't want to set once it is set like you will only allow it to set only once sell the values only once and therefore another thing which we have to do is we have to mark the members of this class all the members of this class is final so private final right because we ideally want this members of the class to be set only once and that's it we cannot change it again and as a result since we are not allowing to you know uh, change the contents of the particular member or the particular field once it is set therefore it doesn't make any sense to provide a setter method as well only the getter method will be there now talking about the constructor right we will initialize or we will declare a constructor which is an parameterized constructor which will set the members of the fields of this particular class all at once so let's go and quickly do that so public immutable class it's which takes an id and this dot id is equals to id we'll also require a get method right and for that let's say public int get id and we will return the id right so so far so good uh, we have a integer uh, id right and we have declared our class as final so that it cannot be extended our fields is private and final right so that its value can be declared only once to this constructor and it cannot be changed right and that is the same reason we are not providing any certain methods as well just achieving immutability Q to introduce another attribute or another member of this class which is string and he would ask you that if I introduce a string, do I need to make any changes to my existing code? So let's see whether we need or not. So first of all, let me uh, like declare a string, private final string, let's say name. Okay. And now I have to pass a name as well. String name, name. And this dot name is equals to name, right? And also I need a getter method for this particular name. So it will be public int get name return name and this will be string so this is also fine because we know that string is basically an immutable object right so since string is an immutable object uh, we don't really need to change anything in our code and everything will still work fine right uh, because we are passing the name once and it is getting set right and we know that the contents of the name cannot be changed okay now let's test our class uh, to whatever we have achieved so far and see whether it is actually immutable or not okay so now in the now in our test class uh, in our main method what we are doing is we are we have we are creating an object of this immutable class we have passed the id as zero and we have passed the name as riti and we are getting this id and we're getting this name right so let me go and print out uh, print this out quickly so the id is equals to id and Let's also print out the name. Name is equals to plus name, right? Yeah, so let me quickly go and print this. So you see the ID is zero and the name is at the right? Now let's say that what if we 
change the id let's say we change the id to 7 from 0 and also we change the name to something else right some random characters now if we again go and print these two things not these two things we will now directly uh, print uh, object dot get id from the content itself and also do object dot get name you will see since though we changed the value of the id and the name that we got from here the contents would still be the same right it will still be the same and the reason is that string is actually an immutable class right it's an immutable class so therefore you cannot change the internal contents of the string so whenever we did this whenever so basically now name was pointing to the same string right that the object return but whenever we try to change the content of the string we saw in the last video that a new reference of the string object is created now this name doesn't point to the same string of that is there in the object anymore so therefore the contents of the string doesn't change it is immutable and as a result that you don't need to change anything in the code because strings are immutable right and into obviously is immutable because these are primitive data types so all primitive data types are immutable and also strings are immutable as well now the next question and the next challenge comes let's say what if you introduce uh, something called a hash set do you need to change anything in your code let's take a look at it So we are uh, we are going ahead and defining a new set. We are introducing this new attribute uh, to this particular uh, to a particular class, and let's say we pass this set and method set integer set, and we do this dot set is equals to set, and we also try to introduce a getter method where basically we will return. this particular set and we will name it get set in the class back in the class we would create a new hash set so let me go and create a new hash set set of integer set equals new hash set and let me add few values set dot add one set dot add three and let me pass this set to this constructor now let's say that here uh, let me just quickly comment out these few lines right okay now let me get the contents of this set right uh, from this immutable class so what i would do is since i've already introduced the setter method getter method for this particular set uh, object dot get set right and we would have this set uh, let's say stored in some variable so set integer let's say let's name it object set is equal to this and let me now print this object set so it would print one and three right so now let's me add something to this object set right object set dot add three or let's say object set dot add seven okay now let me go ahead and print this object set and let me uh, comment this so we we'll see one three seven is printed but now again if i go and print let's say uh, object dot get set that is now after changing the content of this object set if i go and print the uh, try to print the contents of the object like the immutable object we would see that both prints 137 and this is not good news right because ideally i don't want our class to be immutable here what was happening is if we were changing the name uh, if we were changing the content of the id and name using the local variable the contents of the object or the member of member fields of the object was not changing but here whenever we are introducing a set right the and we are taking that set right and we are using the reference to add some values to the set we can see that we are also tampering with the set that is there in the object as well and that is something we don't want so in order to avoid this because it violates the immutability principles what should we do so now we have to change the code and what do we have what we have to do is in this get method 
we have to clone the object we have to perform a deep copy of this object so that we have to ensure that whenever we are returning this this particular set using the get method you will first perform a deep copy we will basically make a separate copy and return the reference of the separate copy so even if the contents are being changed by the caller right my content will still remain the same because mine is a separate copy and what i'm returning to him is a separate copy so he would work on that copy he won't have the right or the control to tamper with my content so now what we will do is instead of directly returning the reference to the set we will create a copy of the set and we will return that right so what we will do is we will create a new hash set we will return a new hash set and i will pass this set so what happens is a different copy of the set is being returned so let me now quickly go here and now quickly print this and now you will see since this local variable set has a different copy right so even if it tampers the original contents of the immutable class won't be changed and we are going to see that in action so you see this is 137 that is the object set because uh, this has a local copy and it added 7 to it but this 1 3 that is this the contents of the object didn't get changed and therefore we achieved immutability there is however one small thing which we need to do is we need to go to this immutable class and inside the constructor we also need to do the same thing right because what might happen is the set integer right that is being passed to the constructor right what if this is being changed right so let's say now you 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 pass this set right and here you again added set dot at three right after passing it so that would also change because now both are pointing to the same reference as well right so now if you do that you will see the content let's say i add seven okay so now you will see the contents will change it will change to one three seven ideally we passed one three so when at the time when we passed this set it had only one three right but after that let's say i tampered with it uh so that is again breaking the immutability principle so for that also inside the constructor we also have to ensure that we are creating a, a deep copy of this and we will achieve that simply by using this so two two places you have to do the deep copy one is while you are setting inside the constructor right because this reference variable that is being passed to the constructor that that is sent to you by the client or the outside world so the outside world has control over that particular reference so it might change its content afterwards as well but you should not change so that is why you should perform a deep copy and you should never rely or directly copy the reference to your reference right and also while returning you should do the same thing as well right so now let me quickly go ahead and run this and now you will see that even if I add 7 over here, it will still continue to print 1, 3, right? So if I if I print this object.get set, let me also remove this so that you are not confused, right? So if you see that we uh, this set which we passed is 1, 3, and then after passing, we added 7, right? But now if we go and print this object.get set, it will just print 1, 3 and not the 7 because here we performed a deep copy at both places that is one at the mute at the constructor and also at the get method so these are the things that you need to take care of while creating an immutable class one is you have to uh, declare the class as final so it cannot be extended the field should be declared as private and final so that it can be only initialized once whenever you are creating a constructor you have to create a parameterized constructor and you don't need to expose any set methods and also ensure that whenever you are using any any uh, members which are which are not immutable which are mutable for example has set set priority queue stacks stuff like that right uh, link list right these uh, which are not immutable which are mutable whose value can be changed you always need to perform a deep copy even in, in the constructor as well as while you will be returning in the get method for primitive data types and string which are anyway immutable class in itself you don't need to do these operations you don't need to perform deep copy because you know anyway that immutable the variables are immutable in itself but for classes or member classes which are not immutable whose behavior is not by default immutable you have to do this deep copy and return it so that is the case. i hope this video was insightful and if it is if it was please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel for more such content on java software engineering dsa and related other topics i will see in some other video till then stay safe goodbye and don't forget to comment down below that what was the favorite part or what was the new thing you learned in this video till then stay safe and goodbye